We're uh, down another aisle and we're with Joe Withy and we're in the homebrew section now. So uh, Joe, why don't you give us some of the uh, uh, interesting points about this homebrew area? I'd have to say back in probably 1990, we there were some articles about homebrewing and it was kind of a hobby that people were very interested in. So I went and made a few phone calls to North Carolina and uh, found out a couple brew houses. Um, since then, we've established a phenomenal homebrew beer and wine section, which people absolutely love. Everything to do it um, simply or very uh, professionally if you want to. And there isn't much that we don't have relative to homebrew being beer and wine. And whatever we don't have, we special order in. Um, and we go through an awful lot. It's a big, very important part of the store. Um, it is uh, not overlooked, people appreciate it, and our prices are very competitive, even with the people that are online, because of the freight charge. So, people are having fun, and uh, we have books. Um, we even have uh, some of the extracts for making homebrew sodas, and uh, you know, so it's not always just beer and wine. It can be root beer and sarsaparilla, and raspberry sodas, etc. And then again, we have in our, in our beer and wine making supplies, we have a lot of glass jars and containers that people use for Kahluas or, or even, you know, a decorative oils, etc. So it's not only, it overlaps many parts of what people want. Um, the amber jars, the clear jars, the colored jars, they come in real handy for people that are doing home craft sup items and things like this. And it complements some of the... Uh, smaller jars, the one ounce tincture jars, um, and some of the uh, cosmetic product jars that we have. It's all in the same area and people people really like it. So with all the uh, plants and edibles that are out out in the outside in uh, the mother nature now, you can basically sort of pick different things and come up with different types of flavorings to oh, the absolutely. brews? absolutely and we always encourage people always write your recipe down. If you did something a little bit different to an original recipe, write it down. Because if it was the best brew you ever had, you want to remember that. <laughs> and you know, it's like huckleberry, cherries, apples, peaches, and we have all of that stuff that grow here. Right. And even some of the dandelion wines, etc. There, It's the sky's the, the imagination. The sky's the limit, whatever you want to ferment out. Um, but it's a great place to uh, utilize some of the items that grow in your backyard. And uh, I understand uh, a number of people have actually uh, brewed uh, different types of uh, drinks or spices or oils and uh, they've basically given it away as gifts. Absolutely. Like um, Kahlua is very popular and you'll see some of the Grolsch type bottles and some of the other pop top bottles. It, it, it just in the um, Christmas time People are brewing now, they're brewing in September, October for Christmas. Some of the wines might take a little bit longer than that. Um, you know, something like the mead takes an awful lot of honey beer, it takes a long, long time to ferment out. But generally speaking, like in beer, it's, you know, 10 to 14 days and you're pretty much done. Wine takes a little bit longer. So with our uh, uh, growing supply of bee uh, makers here, uh, bee uh, tenders, whatever, they, uh, the mead uh, would be a pretty interesting thing to, the honey mead would be a pretty interesting thing to maybe start with. Um, it's a little bit more complex. We recommend people doing that later down the uh -huh. road because they, you've got to be very patient because it ferments so slowly, different kind of a complex carbohydrate versus your dextrose, your fermenting sugar or dry malt extract. Those ferment out faster. People are a little bit, you know, especially the first time, you want to do something that you can actually enjoy. Right. All right, um, and now we'll move over to another area within the store.